Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric. We got a brand new series launching for you today. I'm going to be reviewing every single Capcom arcade game made on the Capcom Play System, Play System Dash, CPS2, and CPS3, because I love them so much. And to start, we're taking a look at 1941. Before we get too far into the off, you can do me a huge favor. Go down below and hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon link down there as well. But I absolutely love all the Capcom arcade games. They are amazing and they're up there with Konami and Sega as one of the best arcade developers of all time. So I decided why not talk about the entire library. Now I have talked about a few games from each system in the past and I'll just be adding those videos to the playlist for completion's sake. But we're going to have about 50 different videos coming out. It's going to take about a year to do this entire series but I'm super excited for it. Sometimes they'll be alphabetical, sometimes they'll just be however I feel like putting them in, but it's going to be a lot of fun. But getting right back into 1941, it's an absolutely amazing vertical shmup, and it's just one game in the series. There's a few other games on the Capcom CPS2, but every 1941 game in its own right is an amazing vertical shooter. It's a genre that I really enjoy playing. I'm not the best at it, but every single time I play these games, I have a blast. And I actually have a really close relationship to this game when I lived in Brooklyn, and God, that was probably like 16 years ago. We didn't have laundry in our building, so I had to go to the laundromat on the corner, and they had this cabinet in there. It was set to play for just a quarter, so I would definitely spend about as much money on playing it as I would actually doing my laundry. Sometimes I think I spent a little too much money and probably dwarfed my laundry cost, but it was an awesome cabinet to have around the corner, and it is one board that I definitely will add to my collection as a physical board. Because I am playing this on the Mr. FPGA with a Jotago CP core, and it is absolutely outstanding. I do have a couple different Capcom boards in my closet, and I'll be doing a mix between real hardware and FPGA emulation, but this is an awesome option if you want to play the game. But as far as the mechanics are concerned, if you've ever played a vertical shmup, you know exactly how to play this. You have a bomb, you have a shoot button, you move left, right, up, and down, and you avoid bullets. It's as simple as that. Where the real fun and joy in these games come is learning the patterns and getting better at them. And I would say, you know, on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being super easy, 5 being it takes all your quarters and beats you up in the back alley, this is like a 3. It's easy enough to learn, you do have a little bit of a life bar, and you're not going to get beat up too badly. Now I will say one thing I hate about this game, and a lot of the Capcom CP system games in general, is when you start running out of life, the game gives you a low life warning sound, and it just keeps going and going and going. So sometimes in these captures, I will intentionally kill myself just to stop listening to that beep. I do not know why Capcom did it, it drives me nuts. I wish someone could modify the ROMs to remove that one sound effect, it would make me so so happy, but it's just kind of the thing that they did. Graphically, I also love the game, and I love kind of this like World War II setting. We have these giant aircraft carriers, but then we have like jets as well. So it's definitely mixing different airish and genres. Some things seem really World War II based, some things seem Vietnam based, and some seem very modern. But that's a lot of the fun in the game. But it's a really challenging and interesting title, and I love all the 1941, 1944 series games. They keep changing the numbers; it's hard to keep track of them, and they're really fun if you want to start getting into vertical. Shmups. If you want to get into something like bullet hell games and cave games, starting with these sort of vertical shmups is going to be a really easy way to kind of get inroads into the genre before you really jump off and start trying to get into the lot more difficult games. As like I said earlier, I've always loved this genre, but it's not one that I've ever gotten amazingly good at. I can only one credit clear one game, and that's Tobey Polystars on the 3DO M2, and that's just because I've loved that game so much I've played it to infinity, and it's honestly not that hard of a game. But I definitely think this is another game that if you wanted to go for one credit continue, or you really wanted to learn it from start to finish, it would be an awesome option because it isn't the most brutal game ever. And I know there's a giant market for those really difficult shmups, and I appreciate that. Just for me, I like playing them, but I'm never going to spend the time to learn how to get really good. But graphically, this looks amazing as well, especially for the year that it came out, and the sound effects are awesome as well. So what I'll let you do is listen to them about a minute or so, and I'll be back and tell you more about why, if you never played 1941, you definitely should. But enjoy!
And now you've heard that absolutely horrifying low health warning. And I do not know why Capcom put that in every single one of their Capcom CP system games. It drives me absolutely insane. And it kind of, to me in a little way, ruins a little bit of the experience. I know it's a minor complaint and I shouldn't really worry too much about it, but it's just one of those things. I don't know who thought that was a good idea and I'm so glad they got rid of it moving on into the future. But again, right back into the gameplay and the graphics, I love all the parallax scrolling, our planes going underneath that girder there, especially for when this came out. This looked amazing. It was doing stuff that no home system could do, and it was a really great experience. And you could find these games in pretty much every arcade you went to. Capcom had a gigantic market share on the floor, and it's just one of those things that I'm sure if you've ever been to an arcade in the 90s, if you didn't see 1941, you're definitely going to see another video that's coming up on this playlist. But again, this is just a great way to get into shmups. I like how the screen moves left and right. I like how you have to navigate the environment. And I like that it gets progressively more difficult without ever feeling super punishing. And there are a ton of difficulty settings that you can change on the PCB with dip switches or in the Mr. Core in the options menu. So you can definitely kind of ramp up or ramp down the difficulty as you choose and get better at the game. But graphically, I just think it's one of the best games on this platform. All the sprites are huge. They're moving around. Slowdown is definitely to a minimum. It is there on pretty much all of the games on the system, but it's not so bad that it's really going to affect your gameplay. And usually when it slows down, that means there's a lot on screen anyway and you kind of want to have that little extra second to think about how you want to navigate because it's definitely not a bullet hell game but in later stages you are going to get a lot of projectiles that you need to navigate around and i would say that the hit box on the plane is totally fair sometimes i feel like they're a little bit too large and you feel like if you just got grazed by a bullet it's going to kill you and then in bullet hell games obviously the hit box is tiny so you can navigate through a lot and i would say 1941 is a super fair feel to me again there's that beep don't know why it's just a thing but i love this game and i absolutely will continue to play it as one that i might start to try to learn for one credit continue because i'd love to be able to one cc more than one shmup but if you've never gotten into the genre I can't recommend this enough. If you're into shmups and you've never played it, you definitely should check it out as well. It is just an absolutely outstanding game, and I can't recommend it enough. I love the power-ups, all the different projectiles you get. It's got a lot of versatility and a lot of different things going on in the design. I even like that music when you get through the stage. And you'll see now that we move on, we've kind of moved into a naval battle. There's all sorts of different graphical effects going on. On the screen, you can see little torpedoes coming through the water. The amount of detail that they put into this game when they made it is one of its best assets because even though you shouldn't really be looking off screen and seeing what's going on below you, your eyes kind of drawn to it. I'm not sure if that's a design thing to try to actually make you die and put more quarters in or if it's just a detail thing that they wanted to add it. And that's the one thing that I always wish you could do in shmups is look at the background scenery a little bit more because the minute you look away from what you're doing is the minute you die. Well, sometimes you die even if you are paying attention, but it's just one of those things that I wish there was a mode where you could just look at everything going on because this game is just absolutely outstanding to look at. It's outstanding to play. It sounds great. The sound effects are good. It's just one of those games that you absolutely have to check out if you haven't. But moving forward, I'm going to show you every single game on the Capcom CP system. And like I said, sometimes they're going to be alphabetical, but I'm not going to do like three Street Fighters in a row. Sometimes I'll mix them up a little bit, but we're going to be doing that every single week for the next X amount of weeks. I think it's something like 50 total. It's almost a full year and it's going to be a lot of fun because like I said, Capcom just knew how to make arcade games. I mean, they make great home games too. You know, they had their rare miss now and again, but for the most part, every time Capcom put an arcade game out, you knew you were going to be talking about an absolute hit of a game. Short of that, we will be back next week with another episode in this series, and we'll have videos on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday as well. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Love chatting with you guys. Do me a huge favor, ring that notification bell. Otherwise, we've beaten the stage. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.